Greetings from Southern Yankee Homestead. This is your first time. Welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Uh, today, well, the meat birds, they be getting a little big. They be needing to go out. They be needing some hanging waters. So, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and build our chicken tractors. Uh, nothing fancy, nothing new about this really, I don't think. We're going to be doing the Joel Salatin style, so they're going to be uh, they're going to be simple and easy to move. I hope. Uh, what's going to determine our size is two things. First thing is the uh, square footage. We have 48 meat birds, so we know we're we're figuring for 50 because 50 is a nice even number. And by what I see online, you need two square feet per chicken. So at 50, we need 100 square feet. That would be a 10 by 10 uh, enclosure, which if, if you've seen lumber and you know getting something that long, it gets kind of flimsy if you build it light. So we're going to build two, which ease of numbers, eight by eight would be 64 square feet. 64 times two would be 128 which is more than enough space for 48 birds. Two foot is the minimum. If you go over it, it's not gonna kill them. Now, what's going to determine our final dimensions is our material. So, we have metal mesh that is uh, two feet tall. I might need to get some more because it might not be long enough to do what we wanna do. And I got some 26 inch by 10 vinyl paneling in white. Uh, the reason I'm not using tin or metal is two parts. First part is I don't have any. If I had some used roofing tin, I'd use that. Uh, the second part of that is uh, we're going to be slaughtering these birds about the mid-May. And we may in the fall do a second batch of meat birds. And I just realized you got dirt all over your lens. Anyhow, we may in the fall be doing more meat birds. Uh, with that, it gets hot down here. And we want, if we want to use these for turkeys or something else, then having a metal roof that sits out in the sun that's of a dark color is a good way to make a oven or a solar powered oven that will cook the birds. So we're going to use white vinyl roofing uh, for a good portion of this. But right now, we need to go ahead and figure out our dimensions. So, let me grab a tape measure. The roofing panels are 10 feet long which they go all the way back in the truck and they come out to the tailgate, so they're about 10 feet long. They say 26, and if you measure them, they are 26 inches. But you gotta work off the 24 mark. Let's see if I can get this set. I'm going off the 24 mark because you want one rib between them. You don't wanna butt them up together or else it's gonna leak like a sieve. So we figure 24, so if we go eight feet, that would give us about a two inch overhang on both sides. Or, yeah, two inch overhang on both sides. So we're actually going to make it right around eight feet wide, but the length, we're gonna shorten up. So, I need to have a pen or a pencil or a crayon or something in here so I can write this stuff down. Should have a, ah, I got a pencil. So, using our Fragili box here, we know we want eight feet wide. Uh, and then for the length, and mind you, I'm figuring this out on the fly. So I have the idea in my head, now I'm just trying to figure out the dimensions and write them down. So if we're going eight feet long, we're going to be cutting those to eight feet to get two inches. We're going to need seven foot, eight inches. 
so overall length will be seven foot eight inches by eight feet so i can cut four boards to eight feet for now because that would be our four runners and i'll need to cut some more in the future for the lid but we'll worry about that when we get to the lid so i guess i need to set up the saw for reference this cutoff saw that i have here i've had this for years now this is a what is this craftsman seven and a quarter inch sliding compound miter saw uh model number one three seven two one one nine four zero uh like i said i've had that for a lot of years it's done me a lot of good a lot of work nothing fancy about it and by today's standards it's really a cheap thing. Kidding. This is how I ended up building it upside down. I still need to put some additional supports in, but now I'm going to flip the whole thing over and screw the other base to this base to make a nice big box. As far as hinges, I'm using the cheapest POS hinges I could find. It's like three bucks for two of them.
All right, well, it's the next day. Sorry I didn't, uh, or the battery died on the camera, so I didn't get to finish a couple little things, but I thought I'd go over the uh, tractor before I move it out. Uh, if you hear a lot of noise in the background, that's because the baby chicks are definitely ready to get out and get on the yard. So we're going to go ahead and move the chicken tractor here in just a few minutes. Uh, but first, I thought I'd go over it. Not knowing where I left off, I added some handles on the front so that you can open the uh, front. We have a stick for a prop, nice and simple. Uh, you can see what I mentioned earlier about the difference in the wires, but who cares. The handle to carry it is a little bit of uh, 550 cord or paracord as they call it, and a piece of an old garden hose just so it doesn't bite into your hands. And where am I? About center. You see, one-handed. It's not super easy, but it's not exactly difficult either. Uh, I hope Hun will be able to move it. And if she can't, we'll figure out how to do it from there. But right now, oh, as far as waste goes, this half of the screen, this side here, all the way around to right there, that is stuff that I already had. So, from that spool of half inch that I had, this is what's left. Literally two feet, maybe, foot and a half. The new wire that I got have about the same amount left. And then of course, I ended up with one two foot section of that plastic panel left over. So overall, I think it worked pretty good. Um, overall cost, we're right around $130 for this entire chicken tractor. We could have done it a lot cheaper if we had some additional materials around. And if you're thinking of building one, Look at what you have. You might be able to do it cheaper. Uh, if we had the roofing panels that I used or some kind of tin or old uh, corrugated steel or something along that lines, just enough to keep the area dry, we could have very well done this for under 20 bucks, given that we have the sawmill, we have wood available, uh, all that stuff. But even then, it's 120 bucks. And... I could have used tarps and made it even less expensive, but that would have required more of the metal mesh or the uh, hardware fabric to help support it. And we've had problems in the past. Uh, if you've seen our mobile coop build, that originally had a tarp uh, top on it. It lasted about four months and then it was getting lots of holes in it and just wasn't holding up very well. So. You can do it for less, but we wanted to do it to last. Uh, we should be able to easily get three seasons out of this, maybe four, maybe five. Uh, each, each year we get more use out of it, we uh, basically bring the cost down. So there's an initial investment, yes, but from that initial investment, the cost will drop. Um, other than that, I'm going to stop talking now and we're going to move this out on the yard and get those uh, loud little devils in the back placed in here. And with that you're going to see also why the I really like these chicken pallet brooders that we built.
bit. I'm gonna go through and uh, get him some more feed and water and close them up and let them uh, chill for a little while. Uh, we will be moving this once a day to start. I do have to build some feeders, which is probably gonna be the next video or the video after that. But the rest of today is going to be cleanup time. So I'll be cleaning up the garage, cleaning up the waterers, cleaning up the feeders. All that fun stuff. Cleaning up the brooders. Uh, we will be supplementing light in here. Uh, the biggest reason is today is the 30th, Wednesday is the 1st. April 1st is our last official frost date. April 1st and April 2nd, going into the morning of the 3rd, they're calling for upper 20s in this area, so we're probably going to have a frost after our last official frost date. So we will be supplementing with these heating lamps on those uh, colder nights, and that's one of the reasons why we're running this so close to the house. Second reason we're running this so close to the house, we're usually going to have some food in here, and the bears are coming out of hibernation. The closer to the house, the less likeliness that the bears will come by to enjoy the food. And I'm not talking the chickens. I don't think the bears will bother the chickens, just because of the quantity. But they will go after the feed. So that will be something we have to keep an eye on. And again, that's why we're running it close to the house. One is for the electric, two is for the uh, bears. So. Let me go ahead and get some water for these guys and get them closed up so I can stop bugging them and get these two poop chutes cleaned out. Plus the pile of crap that's in the garage that fell out. So I got some modifications I'll make to these to make them a little better, but that will have to wait for another video. Hope you enjoyed this chicken tractor build. We'll let you know how it turns out and how it works. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye. I'm gonna cut the camera off here because uh, <laughs> you're gonna get bored as hell watching me put all these damn screws in, drill all these damn holes, walk back and forth, sweating all over the place, blah, 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 blah.